Hey Grant, let's go over a few basic functions of the Fire Tablet. So we want to look to make sure that it's oriented correctly with this at the top, that's the camera. And then on the top edge of the device we have a power button. Let's see if I can focus on that. Yeah, you have the power button. And the device is usually in a standby state to save battery power. So it's on, but the screen is off. And when you touch that button at the top, the screen will turn on. Now you're at your lock screen. It's got the time and this arrow over here. If you tap this, it bounces, which is suggesting to drag it in the direction that it's bouncing. So when we do that, we drag this arrow, drag this alligator mouth to the left, unlock, and now we're at the home screen. <coughs> so, one on the home screen, we have the recently used applications. If we drag this across, you see that it's a carousel of items. This is programs that I've opened recently. You can drag left and right. Up here is a list of everything that you can do, pretty much. So this would be shopping for stuff, this would be playing games, this is programs, books, and so forth. If you want to activate any of those individual items, tap the name. Here's a list of apps. And this bar will be present in most things you do on the tablet. So we'll use this back arrow to get back to the previous screen. <coughs> Need a little sip of water. So let's go into the Silk browser, which is represented by this icon. You see it right there. It's, it represents um, the globe covered in an S for Silk. So here's a web page. It's the QVC web page. You can scroll up, scroll down, see what's going on. Just drag. You'll find different things on the site that are clearly meant to be actionable. So like any of these items at the top, these are buttons. They're meant to, to give you some kind of function. With the menu, that's that hamburger button with the three lines. It's going to open to give you a menu. It's quite a menu, in fact. So uh, that takes up most of the screen. So let's try to get out of that by touching an area off to the right of it because there doesn't seem to be another button that closes this menu. But when we touch that, it goes away. So if we wanted to see what's trending, that's probably the latest, hottest items on the site. It takes you to a different page. So these buttons can be links either to expanded functions on the same page or they can take you to a different page. So let's touch the back button to go back to the home page. And you're kind of stuck where this page is actually loaded twice. So if you press back once, it doesn't do anything. It just kind of sends you back to reload this page. So now we have to press this back button twice. One, two. And we're back to the home page. That's a little thing to be aware of because um, there's different things that can happen. And if, the, if it doesn't seem to be going back, just pressing back twice will help you. But you don't need to press back twice most times. So let's check out another page. Let's say we're done with QVC. So let's touch where it says QVC to activate the URL bar and now our keyboard pops up so we can put in a different domain and let's check um, let's read something about news today so let's go to Reuters R E U T E R S dot com and then once you've got the domain that you want to go to right there so CNN.com Fox News whatever I just picked Reuters so go Okay, so I'm thankful to be alive after this just happened. Uh, it's tricky with so much news available about that stuff. Don't want to be obsessed over it, but um, that was where the story broke on, I guess it was Wednesday, the San Bernardino Twitter, the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department Twitter account was where the news was, was broken, so it's important sometimes to have access to this stuff. Um, so these are... All of these are different stories, and you get the sense that each one of them has a link because there's, like, in this one at the top, it does have the lead of the story, just the first two sentences, but the the title, which is a link, is in bold. So it's easy to see which are the action points here and which is just made for you to read. And as you scroll down, you'll find that <clears throat> the bolded text is consistent across all these links. So whenever you're seeing bolded text, you're seeing a link. And they're separated by lines, and each one of them, except for these two, each one has a small picture beside it to show that it's a different topic. 
So if you touch one of these, it'll take you to that page. And it showed you that it was about to do that by activating the link in orange when you touched it. Now this is the Silk Browser telling you that if you wanted to remove the bars that are around the page and change it into a format that is consistent across all web pages, you could press this book. So press the book. And now this is a standard font, whereas typically web pages are designed to look different. It's just like every site will have a logo. They have their own style of text. So that was just there. I wouldn't recommend necessarily using that, but it popped up, so I wanted to show you as it happened. So we'll go back to the main Reuters page. We'll touch back. Oh, I pressed back twice, so it went back to QVC. And that was my point from earlier. You don't want to press back twice in a situation unless you actually wanted to go back twice. In that case, I didn't, so I'll go back and I'll touch my website address again, this HTTP www stuff. Most sites are just www, but like, for example, qvc.com. I don't need to type the www. I'll just type qvc, and then I'll press the .com button. And see, it says just qvc.com there, right? But I'm ready to go, so I'll press the go button. And it'll take me there. And it actually it adds the www where it's where it's useful. So you can look for the www. That's where you want to type in the URL that you want to go to. But you don't have to type www. And it will save you some time. So let's see. What else can we do in this? We have... Uh, let's go to cnn.com. Okay, so there's our menu icon. Sometimes they're on the right side. And notice how that menu, it animated itself into an X. So that means that instead of on the other page that we had had to touch outside of the menu area in order to get the menu to go away, that doesn't work on this site because it has its own X button. So close that menu. And you see, watch, watch as you transition. Like I'm going to press the menu button and it's going to animate itself. These three lines are going to become an X. And so you just, that button is still active and it just changes its icon to show you what its function will be. When it's going to open the menu, it looks like this. When it's going to close the menu, it's an X. So up here is a magnifying glass. That lets you search things. So if you tap that, it'll bring down a bar. And then see how it says search CNN? Touch that text. And it'll bring up a keyboard. So let's search... Let's search CNN for San Bernardino. I put an H by accident. B E San Bernardino. Okay, <clears throat> and then we would tap down here where it says go. Okay, so now it's loading the shirt, the search results, and it has two thousand stories about San Bernardino. Here's something that you'd want to know about the internet. This is a little popover. So this is a notification that is um, laying on top of the screen, kind of. Like, see how it's covering up this picture below it? And it's just something that you have to acknowledge. So you could scroll, and it'll still work. It's just covering up the screen. But it's covering up the screen to let you know something important. And then it has an X where you can close that. So just touch that X, and it descended. Now it's gone. Now you have the full screen. So these are the results for the search that I typed in. And now it gives me a... It is, it's on the search results page and then there's a box with... See how there's a, a box outlining that text? And especially when there's a search button beside that, that means that this text is... Uh, I can edit this. So I'm going to touch on the right edge and that's going to put the cursor in there. And I could do a couple of things. I could delete all of it. I could um, make an add. I could add something. But I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to put in San Jose. Perhaps there's some better news up there. And then I'll press search. I'm waiting for the search results. Okay. Indeed, <laughs> better news out of San Jose. So now this is a series of links as I showed you before. So you have the bold text up here. That's what you touch if you want to read that story. And if you hold it, you get this context link or this context menu. So that's how you know you've hold it versus tapped it, right? Because like if you have a link and you just touch it, it's going to go to that page.
wrestling is wonderful. And then you press back to go back to the previous page. Now watch when I, instead of just tapping the link, if I hold it down for about two seconds or longer, this context menu will pop up. And I have different options. So um, we'll get into this in another video. But if you're doing this, if you see this when you're viewing the internet for now, just know that you're holding the link too long and you need to simply tap it. Okay, Gran, this is the, this is, I've given you the scoop, the, the inside scoop for how to begin using your tablet, and I'm going to make more videos for more specific topics as we identify stuff. Love you.